it's March 12th, 2021. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop, and we are on block 22 of Socialites. Socialites is a completely free program provided by Fat Quarter Shop where you can make three inch, six inch, and nine inch blocks. And we're on block 22. It's designed by Vanessa Gertson of Layla Boutique, and this block is called Blessed. And you'll notice the names. We put some really positive names on all of the blocks um, just to kind of keep all of us going. So I was going to first show you her blocks that she made. They're super cute, and she is using Christmas Morning, which is her new collection that should be coming out in two months. And I love how in one of the blocks she has all the stripes straight, and then one of the blocks um, she has a couple of them turned a different way. So playing with your blocks before you sew them together will give you kind of different looks. So you can see even though the red and the green on the bottom have stripes, they have a totally different look because of how she turned her stripes. So that's something that you could do at home and have fun with that also. So I'm gonna show you um, first our blocks. This is gonna be the last block that I do in the nine inch size. And then next week I'll start with a three inch size. So is that right, Lily? Yes. So I'm a little bit nervous because three inch, oh my gosh, those are really hard. Ooh. But I do think it's good to show. So my blocks that I made are from the Homestead Collection by April Rosenthal. And so these are the blocks that I did. Now this block could be constructed two different ways. So you could do this right here. You could actually do three half square triangles. We wrote it with one half square triangle and one flying geese. But if you want, you could do three half square triangles. So it's up to you how to construct it, which gives you a little bit of freedom. And this is just a very awesome star block and um, it would make really good uh, quilt, like an all over quilt with this. So this is Homestead. Uh, the background is not Homestead though, it's on the farm. So these are my three blocks. And these are the sample maker blocks. So the first one is a quotation by Zen Sheik and that was made by Teresa. And this background is spotted, which is a basic by Zen Sheik. And it kind of started as part of the collection and now they're making it more of a basic that they keep in stock. This is Figs and Shirtings by Fig Tree. And this is uh, by Deborah. This one is Shine On by Bonnie and Camille. And it was sewn by Sue. And then this one is Folktale by Layla Boutique, who is the designer of this block. And this is her Folktale collection that is out now. And Christmas Morning is her Christmas collection that will be out in May. So these are three inch, six inch. And then our last block features Cider by Basic Gray. And this is a grunge. And we had all of our blocks made with the flying geese just so there would be consistency. But anytime you're doing any of these free blocks, you know, they're just free. You can have freedom with your blocks. You can rotate things. You can do whatever you want. You know, when we see your blocks on social media, it's fun to see um, different, um, you know, different things. Now, if you're using a stripe or something, I would definitely do this as a flying geese so you have less cut up, which is what I'm doing today. I'm going to use a stripe just to kind of show a couple of different things you can do. So these are my blocks. I also want to show you the blocks I made in the last couple of weeks just to show you. Now I am going to take, when I'm done with this block today, I should have nine, nine inch blocks. I'm going to find a pattern, oops, that we have to put it in. I'm not sure which pattern yet. I kind of have an idea, but... I don't want to say it because then if I don't do it, I'll feel guilty. Oh. <laughs> like if, it, if I don't think it's going to look good, then I, I want to have the freedom to change my mind. So you can see this one. Um, this right here is a half square triangle and a square. That could have been assembled as a rectangle with a corner square. Mm. So when you're doing a pattern, you can always look at it and say, hey, you know, you can change it however you like. This is one of my favorites. 
and this was the really hard one that gave me nightmares <laughs> at night. I was so scared to do it. So um, I am excited to finish my, my last one in the nine inch size. So I'm gonna get the pattern. It is number 22. So I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna take the little post-it note from over here and cover this, this up so that whenever I'm sewing from anybody's block, if it's got more than one size, like for example, Sherry McConnell's free block of the month has two sizes. So I just cover up the size I'm not doing because if I don't, I will 100% start cutting from the wrong column. So I just kind of use that same sticky note over and over until it loses its sticky. So today, this one is gonna be fun because it's a stripe and you can do a lot of stuff with stripes. Now stripes are scary to use, but if you think about it as it gives you a little bit of design freedom, it won't be as scary. And this is from a fat queer bundle. So you see that I've got some creases in here. So I'll just try to get some of them out. And this is Apricot and Ash by Corey Yoder. And um, I'm not sure what I'll use next week, but I guess I'd probably need to figure that out before next week, shouldn't I? <laughs> um, or I might just keep making nine inch, but I think I'm gonna stop. Okay, so here's my background. And my stripe. And we did um, start our serendipity yesterday, which is our charity quilt. We are make, raising money for Make-A-Wish. So we're going to look real quick and see how much money we've raised. We thank you guys so much because we raised at least $3,000 yesterday for Make-A-Wish. And that's awesome. So that was exciting. 39444 right now. Wow. Which, so that's like 8000 It increased from this morning. <laughs> That's awesome. So thank you so much. So if you haven't seen that, definitely check that out and you can use any fabric you want. It's kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to look at my pattern. And so my A is three and a quarter inch squares and those are my half square triangles. So if I look at my half square triangle, it's two and three quarter unfinished. If I take two and three quarters minus half an inch, that's two and a quarter. So I have two and a quarter inch paper that I'm gonna use. So my A and E is going to be triangle paper. So I'll just go ahead and do these first. And the way you can tell, it's um, three and a quarter inches. And if my paper, and it says trim down, so my paper should be, it's three and an eighth, which is correct because we wrote this bigger so you can trim down. So I'm gonna cut two squares off. I'm at the beginning of my roll, which is why this is not cut exact. So I'm just gonna cut. Now, when you're cutting on triangle paper, you wanna really cut on that line exactly so that you get more accurate cuts on your triangle paper. And like I said, over here, I have a little bit extra, and that's because I just started with a new roll and just cut off um, before I started the video. And so I have my fabrics right sides together. Now, right here, I have a salvage. So when you're working with a salvage, can you zoom in slightly? Mm -hmm. You can actually feel it. It feels rougher mm -hmm. and it's got dots. So you don't want to use this in your fabric. Now, have I on accident? Of course. I try to leave this out though. So I'm going to move my fabric slightly down so that I don't waste any, like if I cut here, I'm in, I'm wasting some white. So I'm going to pull that down so I don't accidentally use the salvage. Put my paper. Now you can make this the traditional way also, which is how we wrote the instructions, but I love triangle paper. But I'm going to show you a tip here. Once you cut that, you want to put your paper on the side of the stripe because if you don't and you end up crooked, your stripes are gonna be crazy. Mm. So I kind of put that line right there on the line of the stripe. Now that's me being OCD. Do you have to do it? Absolutely not. 
but that's just what I do. And I just, you know, make sure that I've covered it, but I just, I don't want to use that salvage. So I do care about that. I mean, I probably shouldn't, but I do. So I've got that. I'll put that on my design board. Okay, my next piece, which is B, is for my flying geese. And we're going to cut two Bs and two Fs exactly the same, which is right here. So I'm going to do those at the same time since B and F are the same. I'm going to cut them, but I'm not sure my stripe is going to go the right way. So we're going to guess, and we're going to, if we have to recut, we're going to recut. So what I'll do is cut a five inch rectangle first. Now I could start here, but if I do that, when I move my fabric a couple times, it might not be exact. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna cut it this way. Now I'm gonna peek to make sure my stripe is straight and it is. If it's not, I'm gonna redo that. So I'll twist this around, cut a five inch strip, and anytime I'm doing a striped block, I kind of just do a cut and then figure out how to make it work. And if it doesn't work, I just re readdress it later. And I have plenty of fabric to do that. So now I'm just cutting two rectangles. And let's see. So these two are my B's. And these two are my F's. And I love doing blocks like this where I can cut two fabrics at one time because it kind of kills two birds with one stone. I think that's the word. Okay, so now for C and G, and H, we need six two and three quarter inch squares from each fabric. And the C's and G's are my corners, so those would be exactly the same. My H's and my H's and D's are for my flying geese. So I'm just gonna cut those at the same time. So to do that, I'm gonna kinda move this fabric over, turn it over, get that um, salvage out of the way. But I'm gonna cut on this side so that I know it's straight. So I'm gonna cut it two and three quarters. I probably can't get all six of them from one stripe, one strip. Okay, so there, you can, okay, so see how I got real close to the selvage? You can feel it and then feel it and you'll know if you cut it off and I did. Mm. So I use my finger a lot for that. Mm -hmm. So I can tell right here, there's not gonna be enough. So I'm gonna do two strips at one time. And to do that, just try not to move my fabric and then I can move this out of the way. And this is where I'm gonna, I have on the my table, I can go to the other side. I can cut from the left side and the front so that, okay, look what I did. Okay, let me try to move it. Can you, oh, let's see, there, zoom out. Okay. Oh, okay. So I cut, but look, I didn't cut enough because when I cut the white, there's not enough white under there. Oh. I didn't get the white salvage off, so look, I've got to go further up. So, so now I've got my salvage off. So, and I'm gonna cut, try to cut six. We'll see if we have enough. I don't know if we do. So that gives us two. And 2.75 plus 2.75 is five and a half. So I can just use the five and a half on the ruler. And then I'm gonna move these and cut that. So when I'm at home, so I'm cutting here, right? Well, I can go to the other side of my table and cut from over here and do that where I'm not having to move my rotary cutter backwards. And then 
Yay, we're all cut. So I'm gonna organize this on my design board. I'm gonna this off real quick. Okay, so I've got my B and F, and I've got some C's. Some G's. These are A and E, so I'm going to move these off. And then I've got D's and H's. So let me know if there's any questions before I start going. I know there were a lot of questions yesterday on starching, mm -hmm. and so Ashley tried to answer those with links to videos we've already done. Mm -hmm. And um, so hopefully y'all watch some of those. Yes, uh, Sally Johnson was asking if you could repeat what size triangle paper you're using for the nine and a half inch block again. Yes. Okay, so for the nine and a half inch block, I'm using two and a quarter, which is H225. For the six inch block, you would need H150, which is one and a half. And for the three inch block, we do not have triangle paper that size. I don't think. Is that it? From Linda Hester, very nice comment. I would have never quilted as well as I do without Fat Quarter Shop, and they single-handedly got me through the pandemic. Oh, hmm. thank you. I don't know how I got through the pandemic. It's still here. I'm <laughs> going nuts. My kids are starting to really get, everything was going really well until this week, and I just think they've hit the, they've hit the wall of getting along. Mm -hmm. And so I have brought some of that frustration um, hmm. All right, and then question from Shannon Thompson. Will any of the flying geese paper work for this block? Yes. So, yes and no. So for this one, let me think it through. Okay, so for the nine inch block, no. For the six inch block, you can use the one and a half by three. Mm. And for the three inch block, no. But the reason I would not use this, because I'm honest, is, give me two seconds to find my blocks. So the reason I would not use that paper on this block is because we're recommending pressing open. Mm. Because if you see all these seams, I think pressing open is much better and you're gonna get a better result. So I would not use the paper. Now I developed the paper, but I still would not recommend it for this block, which is kind of when I'm at home, that's why I do a lot of different methods because I kind of make it work for what will work best for that block. And the reason we're pressing this open is because <clears throat> when we put our blocks together, just give me a second. When we put our blocks together, a lot of our blocks are going to touch mm. and you're going to have seams so you don't want to have to worry about that now if the setting had sashing in between it it wouldn't matter and you could press however you want but for the look we were going for that's why we're pressing open on this versus the socialites the serendipity sorry the serendipity has sashing which i can show right here So the reason we're not pressing these blocks open when you watch those videos is they're sashing here and the two blocks don't touch so it doesn't need to be open. So if you had these two blocks here, we would press these to one side and not open. But in our finishing, they touch and you don't want too many bulky seams. So that's kind of why this one we're pressing to one side and this one we're not. And I think it's also good because we wanna be able to show you lots of different techniques. And from that, you can do what works best for you at home. If you, you know, if you don't like to press open, don't press open. Do whatever you wanna do. All right, and then last question here. If you don't have the triangles on a roll of paper, are the directions written so that you don't have to use it? Yes, so the directions are completely written where you cut them slightly bigger and you trim them down. 
And when I do these videos, um, I just do it how I would do it at home, just to show you my tips, but you're welcome to do it that way, and that's why we wrote it that way, so you don't have to buy anything, and it is a free pattern. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is start right here with my triangle paper. And I'm gonna stitch on the dotted lines as close as I can to the line. And we're gonna use a new camera today? Yeah. Okay, good. I was like, I didn't ask you before we if got, that was working on this one. Yes. So Lily has a new camera angle. Um, Sue Sweeney was ask, actually asking earlier, say, Lily, is Fiona here? She is here, this is Fiona. Oh my gosh, they're <laughs> really so crazy. <laughs> I've never named anything. Like people have asked me if they've named a sewing machine. Yeah. I don't think I would trust myself to name it. I would forget the name. Because, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, I think I would forget. I do name everything. But I will say, Ashley had the privilege of naming this one. Because I've named like three of the other cameras. Okay, so. I said it yesterday, but um, when you do triangle paper, some people will go to this point right here, let's see, and pivot and go that way. Mm -hmm. I just don't. I just feel like it's easier just to move it. And then I can be exact, more exact, I guess. But you could do that, right, if you wanted? Yeah, you could do it. Yeah, you can do either. I just don't. Okay. Now, if we were working on a normal block, and this is a normal block, I would say, but if we were working on a block without a stripe, mm -hmm. I would go ahead and do my flying geese. But we're not gonna do that because I need my stripes to all go a certain way. So we're gonna go ahead and finish the half square triangle and then plan how the stripes are gonna go so that we can look at how it would go. You know, just look at different options that we have. But normally, if it wasn't a stripe, I would keep going. Fiona. Is Fiona like an artist or something? Fiona Apple, is that like a song? Oh, or she an is artist? an artist, yeah. Is she a singer? She, Yeah, Fiona Apple's a singer, but uh, I'm curious. I'll ask Ashley in the room here. She can let me know when she has a chance. Ashley, um, what inspired the name Fiona? Um, and let's see, I will ask a question here from Sarah Martin right now. She says, Lily, please ask Kimberly if she's not worried about her cutting map by ironing on it. Oh, okay, so I'll show you in one second. Yes. That, okay. Yeah, I'll show you. Now at home, I don't do it this way. I have like a separate. So when you're doing the half square triangles, you just cut on the lines, pull the paper off. I like to do this and then pull the paper off and then I'll show you. And Ashley says she named Fiona and, and this is what I thought it was. So I'm, I'm glad I guessed it. After her favorite childhood character from Shrek. From what? It's from Shrek. Oh, okay, yeah. See, y'all, I don't watch movies, so I've never seen that movie. Have no idea who Fiona is. I've never seen that movie. I'll have to go Google it and see what she looks like. Oh, now I'm curious. People are starting to put their sewing machine names in the chat. If your sewing machine has a name, please let us know. Yeah, y'all should name my sewing machine so I can have a name. That would be really cool. Okay, so this, someone just asked a question. What was her name? I'm sorry, I took it off the queue. Okay. But it was about the ironing mat. Okay, sorry. So to answer your question, this side is a cutting mat. And this side is a... No, sorry, that side is an ironing mat. This is a cutting mat. Now, what Lily did is she put this stuff that you put, it's like shelf lining. It is shelf lining. So that when we iron, it doesn't shift because it kept shifting. <laughs> and um, so there's this padding it's pretty thick, mm -hmm. so it won't go through to my uh, mat below. I'm trying to get my words right. Mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna iron these. And when this comes out, we should have two that go one way and two that go the other. Like two that are horizontal and two that are vertical. That's how it'll come out. And then we just have to figure out how they're gonna lay. Okay, now I'm gonna cut off the little dog ears and then we will press open and then lay out the entire block. Do you wanna hear some fun sewing machine names we're getting in the chat? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna tell you the name that I wanna name it. Ooh, yes. I just wanna name it Kathleen. 
I love like, it. Like it, like it's like a name like from my era. Yeah, Kathleen. I don't know who Kathleen is. I don't see, but see when I make up a name, that's the difference between Lily and me and Ashley. I just made up a name. There's no story behind it. There's no movie behind it. There's nothing. I just made it up. <laughs> I think you should keep Kathleen. But I just don't, I guess I just am not creative enough to, but I also, I think part of it is I don't do pop culture. I have no idea what's going on in the world <laughs> half the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I know who like a couple of actors are, but most I would have no idea who they were. Like most, I would have zero idea. Like I could probably pass some famous people on the street. I have no idea. That's, I just don't have that creativity to me. Yeah, tell me the names and I'll lay out, I'll lay out the blocks while Lily has fun. And my goal is, what I'm trying to do here, is I'm going to just follow. And instead of looking at the instructions, I'm going to look at the all over block and then I'll explain why. And it is because it is a stripe. That's the reason I'm doing that. Because I do like my stripes to go the same way. If you don't care about that, then you wouldn't do this part. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. I, I do apologize. I have al allergies today, so I keep clearing my throat. But Donna Strom said, my sewing machine is Cinderella. Aww. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Davis De Giovanni says, I have a faff named Fiona, but it is with a PH. Faff. Faff. Sorry, is that how you say it? I think. Oh, my bad. Lily's <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Learn something new every day. I don't think it matters. Yeah. You can say it however you want. Yeah. Teresa says, sometimes my sewing machine's name seems to just be a frustrated scream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah. uh, Lisa Aldridge says, I have a baby lock jubilant, so her name is Jujube. Oh, I love that name. Oh, my gosh. I had an aunt when I was little, and her name was, um, what was her name? Oh, my gosh. It was something like that, but she lived next door to my grandma and my grandma and her. So my grandmother, okay, I'll tell you a funny story. So my grandmother got divorced from my grandfather for a while. Mm -hmm. This is a different grandmother. And what was her name? Aunt Juby. Aunt Juby. Mm -hmm. Well, Aunt Juby was actually her ex-husband's sister. So that was awkward that she was living anyway. Mm -hmm. She used to get so mad because they lived in a duplex. And the duplex was by St. Edward's, and they would tell me that was Dracula's castle to make me behave. <laughs> it does look like Dracula's castle. Oh, she would walk me to it and say, this is Dracula's <laughs> castle. And um, she used to get so mad at Aunt Ju because she would give me all the candy. Okay, so I'm going to kind of check this to make sure I'm kind of doing this right. And Lisa Brown said her featherweight is Lucy and her baby lock is Patsy. Oh, mm. that's a cute names. Linda Hester's Juki is Pearl and her Janome is Ruby because she has red metallic on it. Oh. Yeah. And Karen Marie says my Bernina is baby and my embroidery is joy. Mm. Y'all all do that. I'm the only one that doesn't, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, my sewing machine at home, it's a uh, Burnett B38. So I named her Little Miss Bernie, like short for Burnett. I do have a sur surging machine, serger or a brother, but I rarely use it. So actually that one does not have a name. You can name her Fergie, like Sergi. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Sergi. Sir Delicious. Okay. Sir mix a lot. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to kind of visualize how this would look. And yeah, y'all can just, you can keep talking, Lily. I'm just kind of, I'm going to play. You'll see me kind of move stuff around. And this is me visualizing it before I sew it. Because if I see it and like it, I'll be good and I won't have to redo it. Because I don't want to have to redo it. There are also a lot of people in the chat who have said they don't name things either. So you're not alone. That's probably my generation. <laughs> That's my, my people that understand me. Let's see. I don't name cars either. I didn't even know that was, I don't, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think Emma had said that one time, you should name your car. And I was like, why? It's why? called car. It's called get in the car. Yeah. Okay. So that kind of looks good. But what I want to show you is you could do something different. You could do... Wait, that didn't work. You could, hmm. 
Let me show, let me figure this out. You could do the stripes where they're different. Oh, going a different direction. So you that see how that gives you that gives you like a K facet look where you've got stuff kind of going everywhere, which is okay. But I'm gonna put mine back to the Kimberly way. <laughs> and you could even play with, you could cut a two of these the other direction. And you'll see that when I, let's see how to say it. When I did this, look, if you go the other way, you could go up and down. Mm. So, but if you pin it, you know where your line is, if that makes sense. So I want to just make sure I've got it all the right way. And y'all can talk. You can talk, Lily, so that I can think. Yeah. And hopefully, y'all ch chirp up if I have it the wrong way. Yes, please. Yes, please, before I sew it. Val Earl says, I own a faff, and I say it like Lily. LOL. My big brother is Bertha. I love Bertha as a name. Susie Rose Finley says, my long arm is named Tilly. My spinning wheel is Sheila. She's from New Zealand. I haven't named my sewing... My, my sewing machine yet, it's a Bernina 350PE. A spinning wheel, that's cool. Okay, Carrie Graziano says, the stripes in the top left are going the right, the wrong way. Yeah, I think I just oh, got you just did that, okay. I think, but I'm, I'm still checking, I'm still checking. So oh, like, I'll yeah, check yeah. this, this, yeah, I'm still checking, because I, I've had one of those weeks that I'm just, Okay, they are saying you just fixed it. Okay, good. Okay, so now what I will do is I'm going to do this a little bit different than I normally do. And this is so that I stay on track. So I will leave this here. Pull this off. I am going to pin. Now you would draw a line from corner to corner right here. But I'm going to show you what I do on my machine now that Lily has this cute little... Yeah. Camera. So at home, my bed goes further out. And when it goes further out, this stripe goes further out. Mm. But I can, I can eyeball it. So when you get right here, you just want to keep your point on that line. And that keeps it straight. Now, I've been sewing along enough that I don't really need, I could probably eyeball it. But if you, you know, it's pretty straight. Let's see. Uh, which of this side? There you go. So it's pretty straight. So I will put this back on the table, just like this. Oops, sorry, there we go. Put it back and then do each that way and then we'll iron and do that each way so that I don't make any mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I'll just kind of do this. So I'm just gonna do them one at a time. Leanne Davis was asking how Piggy is doing. He's good. He's going on a vacation and he doesn't know it. So, <laughs> so it's the first time. So there's a guy that it's a man and his wife, and they, um, and I think the wife's sister, they have a boarding business, but they've been doing it a really long time, so they don't advertise it, and they just have people that's been coming to them for years and years. And um, we leave Piggy at their house, and the owner really likes Piggy and just loves Piggy. So he hasn't been in a year because a year ago is when everything shut down. So he is going to be so excited when he gets there, I bet. And when he knows he's going there, he starts freaking out in the car. Aww. So that's exciting. So I'm going to take him there. And I think he's going to be excited. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to go to, let's see, we're going to Kerrville, I think, to mm. some like little ranch. I don't know what we're doing. I'm going to have my kids ride. They don't want to ride horses, so I'm going to make them. It's payback because they've been really bad this week. Oh. And when I say really bad, oh my gosh, they have been horrid. They're in so much trouble. So I'm like, oh, well, this is what you're going to do. You're going to ride horses, <laughs> taking their iPads away. They're going to they're gonna rough it out. And I have one kid that refuses to wear blue jeans, but you can't. You have to wear blue jeans when you ride a horse. So that's going to be a difficult morning. Yeah. 
trying to get him to put blue jeans on. Oh. But yeah, no, it's been a, I don't know, I can pretty much stay positive most of the time, but man, this week. Mm. I was like, if I get another email from another teacher, y'all are gonna, I had to tell them, I was like, I don't, I don't need any more emails from any of y'all's teachers. We have had several super chats coming in, so I'm going to start shouting those out now. Okay. West End Quilter gave us a super chat for 20 Canadian dollars. Thank, Thank you. you so much. That's so generous. And then we have a new YouTube member, Susie Rose Finley. Welcome, Susie. Thank you. And we're going to do a behind the scenes. We'll do a reveal of the Moda and we did just buy Riley Blake. Also, we'll, we'll Ooh. combine those into a behind the scenes and we will, me, Lily and I can schedule it today, mm -hmm. but it will be in, in about a week and a half because I'm going to be off next week, part yeah. of the week. Yes. <laughs> and we had a super chat from Bonnie still for $9.99 and she put a pair that's dancing around saying number one fan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Okay, so I kind of just keep doing the same thing. I'm just eyeballing it and doing it as I go. And we will show all of that on the regular live stream also. Yeah. All right, and then we have another super chat from Marianne Lucas for $5. And she put a pair that's working out saying, keep it up. Thank you. I need to work out. I need to do something. <laughs> Me too. I need to. I've been eating too many muffins. <laughs> Girl Scout cookies. Oh, those Girl Scout cookies. Kevin bought, um, or no, I bought, we literally have like five cases of Thin Mints at home. I don't even really like Thin Mints. Because <laughs> he eats them all year. He buys enough to wear between the two of us so that we it lasts all year. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, so look at this. Look, that's not working because that doesn't match. Oh, so no. some, something's cut wrong. So I'm going to check and see what I cut wrong and maybe fix it. Um, so it should be 2.75 and it's not, it's not. And the reason why, look at that. That is the edge of the fabric. Look at that. I didn't cut all the way to the edge. You can see it. Does that make sense, Lily? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just cut another piece. And that means there's probably another one that I did that's not the right size, but it's probably this one. It is. So we're going to cut two more squares to fix those two. So I'm just going to do them one at a time, I think. Let's see. Put, I'll just put these in my scrap bucket and then keep going. Sorry. Yeah, so when I put it on here, I just noticed it was about an eighth of an inch off. And so I could have let it go. I could have let it ride, I guess. But then it would have been all, it wouldn't have been right. I could have made it work. Now, if I had to make it work, I would have made it work. Okay, so I think I've got these done. Now I just need to trim a quarter inch away. Now some people, when they're sewing, will use scissors, 
and they'll use those really big fat scissors like this to cut this. Mm -hmm. I just don't do that because look what I just did. I cut skinnier mm. than the quarter inch. So I prefer to not do that, but that is an option that a lot of people do. I mean, Lori does it that way. So you don't have to use the ruler, you know, you just figure out what works, you know, what gives you the best results. You know, maybe you want to sit down and just use scissors and not have to stand up and use a rotary cutter. So I'm going to iron and kind of put them back and then we'll sew the block together or the units and then the block. Okay. And then we had a super chat from Christine Ellis for $49.99 and the, the little pair isn't animating for me, but he looks like he's like taking off somewhere. Aw, thank you. Thank you so much, Christine. I'll iron up here so Piggy doesn't take over. Piggy's my little doggy, if y'all don't know. He's my little baby. So Piggy doesn't take over. He is the little baby. Mm. He is so cute. He's getting fat though. I don't know why. He's on like healthy dog food now and I don't know why. I don't know what it is because he's not eating treats or anything. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's because when we had the snow, he didn't go outside and play for like a week. I'm not kidding. And I think that like just the fact that he laid in bed for a week, he just gained like two pounds. We have another super chat from Amy Johnson for $24.99. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. And a couple new YouTube members, Brittany Gort. Welcome, Brittany. Thank you. And Courtney Am Armour. Welcome, Courtney. Hella said Amour. I missed an R there. And then super chat from Susie Conway for $4.99. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susie. This block is really, <laughs> it is like really busy. So y'all tell me if I'm off. Hopefully I'm not. Mm -hmm. What I will do here, I don't think I'm off, is I'm going to do these two, these two, these two, no, these two, these two. So what I'll do, and I will put it right back in place. I will pin right here. Okay, this is off. Well, Look, that's not 2.75. That's another one that's off. So I think I cut one of, one of them was right that I had. Oh. So let me find those. One of the ones I had was the right size, so it wasn't that one. I'll just cut another one. This I'm gonna get the use of all this, this whole strip. <laughs> now I can throw this out. This is not enough to see. Yeah. That's what I get for trying to save fabric. Sometimes when I try to save fabric, that's what happens because mm. I'm kind of to the end. This is kind of the end of my background actually. So kind of you know, smaller pieces. Mm. Okay. Oops. So we're continuing our Socialites Block 22, and I'm going to put these right sides together, pin. I'm gonna change my foot to the quarter inch foot, and just sew together, put back on my design board. I, um, this really saves me a lot of time because if I didn't have the design boards, I would definitely have mistakes all over the place. And I'll just put it back in the area, you know, not in the exact space. Mm. Just so that when I'm ironing, I know that I, you know, it's just going to save me time. Uh, Wilma Evans was asking on your Juki, does the vibration on the machine cause the thread tension to mess up? No, but, um, this machine is so heavy, I feel like it doesn't vibrate as much as other machines, actually. Um, but the tension sometimes can be tricky on a Juki. But once you get it right, um, it kind of stays. So my settings, I do right in the center here and right in the center here. So there's like an up and down thing that goes right here. I put it in the center and I put this in the center. 
Um, but it, it, I feel like um, my baby lock moved. Oops. I just moved it. See, I just moved it on accident. I got to figure out where I'm at. See, I had it like that because I just was talking. Mm -hmm. yeah, there, um, right. So I do feel like other machines that are not as heavy will shake more. But I don't feel like mine shakes. I don't, I mean, it could, I don't know. Mine doesn't, I don't feel like mine shakes, but. And Mary Weber was asking if you will quilt at the ranch. If I will what? Quilt at, while you're at the ranch. Oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> no. We're going to go, um, they have horseshoes and swimming pool. I don't know. We're going to just play outside, which sounds like a nightmare to me because I don't like to be outside. But no, I'm not going to take my sewing machine. I'll probably take my cross stitch, but I'll probably only do that in the car there and on the car home. I don't think I'll do it actually there. They, it, it, there is going to be one day that it is supposed to rain, so on that day I might. I mean, if, if we can't go outside or anything, I will. But mm -hmm. No, I just want my kids to like get outside and like just get out of the house. They, they're driving me nuts. And I love my kids, but I, and they've, everything's been great until this week. And I said, okay, I got four kids. I don't need three people. I don't need three teachers texting or emailing me about all the stuff. And I told him, I said, pull a deck out of Will's card, Will's card set because his teacher hasn't emailed me. <laughs> so, cause you know, sometimes you gotta tell them, sometimes you gotta, get them a little bit in line. I try, I definitely try not to compare my kids. Mm -hmm. um, but I just was like, because, you know, they were making excuses. And I was like, well, if his teacher doesn't email us, then your teacher shouldn't have to email us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, since I've pressed open, I will put them together, you know, as close as I can get. and pin and then this doesn't have to be it's not touching anything but I will just have a pin about halfway and then I'm going to do the same thing stitch and put it back on the board so I know where it goes and I apologize for this taking so long I just um, want the stripes to go the right way and I'm trying to keep my hand out of here it's just hard because I'm right-handed so Like I can only lift it with that finger, so. You're good, you're good. Okay, so now I'm pinning. I think I'll pin all of them real quick. This block might end up being pretty strong when I compare it to the others. Pretty, I mean, it might have to be one of those things that I put it in the very center of the quilt because it's so strong that if you put it on the edge, your, your eye might go to the edge and it would be better to go to the center. So that's probably gonna be what I have to do on this block is pay attention to where I place it. So. peek and see if my peaks touch. Like I think of them like little mountain peaks. Ooh, they look good. Okay, so now I'm gonna press. 
And we'll do the final block. Oh my gosh, it's taking forever. I'm so sorry. But this is how, um, you know, if you're working with the stripe, if you're going to pay attention to the direction, it is going to take you probably, I wouldn't say twice as long, but maybe 30% more time. Because you can't really, well, I don't want to say you can't, but you, you see that I'm not chain piecing. I'm kind of starting and stopping a lot. But I feel like if I don't do that, then I'm going to make a mistake and have to rip out and then that's going to take longer. So that's kind of what I found works is, you know, definitely using a design board and, you know, going a little bit slower than you normally would. But some people don't care how the stripes go. Um, and that's totally fine too. You saw how Vanessa, her blocks, they look great and two of them look totally different. I'm just not, I just am too, um, I don't know. I just, I, it might give me an anxiety attack if I did that. Now I would do it just like hers if I could copy, like if I could see her block and just follow it, that would make it easy for me because I would know what I'm following. But to plan a stripe is harder. I guess if you're going to do it like um, scrappy stripe, that's harder for me. So I would want to at least draw it out or have something and draw, you know, drawing so I could follow it. Oops. He said no. This this little seam said no. <laughs> Not today. Not today. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you one thing, though. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll work. If you flip these, no, it goes the same way. I was going to say if you flip these, but they, they go the same way. Don't they? Yeah. But it's... then if you wanted to do something like these, you could do... you did something like this you would have okay what I'm trying to do is not working but anyway you can kind of move them around and have your stripes go different ways if you want to but now I got to figure out where what I'm doing because that's not what I was doing let's see let's try to get this back do you think it's right Lily yes white mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there stripes okay so now i'm going to do this now you can see these are going to touch and these are going to touch which is why i said using the foundation paper is not the best because pressing open is important here so i'll put these right sides together pin and then i'm going to put my pin right in this point the tip of the point, I guess, and then the tip. So hopefully they line up. And then. Mammy is asking, would you recommend a shorter stitch length when pressing open? Yes, I would. I do about a 1.8 five with my half square triangle paper and then like a 1.8 with just piecing and also when you do this polka pin if you have if you don't have a short stitch length your your seams are going to start coming out so yes i should have said that today yes i do and if you're you know someone with pressing open and you your seams start coming open that just means you know going forward just make it a little bit smaller mm. as you finish your block just push your seam a little bit less. Okay, so this is hard for me because usually I've got my finger over here. Um, now, right here, you can, when you're stitching right here, you can try to get your needle to hit your point. So sometimes people sew with their um, points up.
I normally don't pay attention to it, um, but you know, sometimes I do. It kind of depends how accurate I feel like I've been before. Oops, and my thread just busted. So we oh. will start. It said, no, you've sewn too long. You need to stop talking. You've sewn too long. You've done too much. You've, it's just too much. I can't, I can't handle it anymore. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's having that kind of Friday. No, I mean, my Friday's good. I just need to figure out. Oh my gosh, my kids get out early today. I'm like, what days do y'all go to school? And which days do you, I mean, this is like constant. They get out early. They, I mean, it's just crazy. I'm like, I don't know what school y'all are going to, but when I was little, we didn't get this much time off. Mm -hmm. So that just means they'll play on the trampoline for an hour. Because they have to play um, after they, they can't get on their iPads until they're on the trampoline for so long. Oh. Because that gets their energy out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or, you know, activity, something. Yeah. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully. Okay, now see how bulky that is? Oh. If you didn't have it pressed open, it would be a mess. Mm. So. <gasps> Yay! Yay. Yay. Oh my gosh. We're going to finish this week off good. Woo. Okay. Okay. Go to the, um, go to the charity Make-A-Wish page and oh, yeah. see if we've made any more money for Make-A-Wish. We're at 39,564. Yay. Wow. That's amazing. I know. I'm so excited. And we will show you as we grant wishes um, and we get photos for Make-A-Wish, we will show them. We haven't shown them in a year because a lot of the wishes, um, some, if you're a child and you want to go on vacation, what they have told people is, um, you know, you can hold your wish if you want or pick a different wish. And so a lot of people are holding their wish until after mm -hmm. the pandemic. So, mm -hmm. okay. And we had a super chat from Ileana Fernandez for $9.99, and she put a cheerleader jumping up and down, doing the split in the air. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, and then another super chat from Ing Maria Hansen uh, for. 45 Danish krone, I believe. And they say, hi from Denmark. Learned so much to see you. And a little smiley face with little hands like this. Thank you. Thank you so much. So here, when I put the pins, I'm gonna pin here, 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 here. And you know, before I kind of go like this, I do think through, okay, what has to match up? And do I need to pin a lot or a little? And some people don't pin as much as me and that's okay. Um, I was talking to someone this week and she was like, yeah, I don't pin at all. And it's like, okay. I mean, and she's a designer. So um, that's what's good about having a lot of YouTube channels you can watch is like you can watch Lori or, or Lisa Bonjean and, you know. Okay, I just bent that pin. <laughs> Did you see that? It bent. I'm going to throw it away. What? I just bent it. You know, I keep finding those pins around here. <laughs> bent ones? Yeah. Oh. Well, that's the first one I've been in a oh, while. Oh, I was like, I guess it's been Kimberly. No, no, no. That's the first one I've been in oh, a while. I found a couple yesterday. No, I don't think it was me, and I don't think I would have missed the trash can on a pin. Yeah. I, I did, I do miss the fabric, but I cleaned my fabric up yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I was missing the trash can yesterday, and I cleaned it up. I was like, I am not going to leave this trash. And lots of people have been asking if and when we're getting the clockers back in stock. Um, it should be kind of soon. Mm -hmm. um, they're made in the United States, and I thought they would have been here by now. So hopefully soon. I think soon, yes. Um, it's just what happens is they ship them from, you know, the guy's house to Riley Blake, and they ship them to us. But last time mm -hmm. I heard, I thought it was going to be soon. Mm -hmm. And then once those sell out, it'll be a while again because... The, it's one guy who does it, so um, you know he'll have to make another batch. Mm -hmm. So 
so you can see how I'm pushing my finger down on that seam and I'm doing it so that it stays yeah. fat flat so it's kind of funny today because I'm used to doing everything mm -hmm. the other way but um yay hopefully it matches Yay. Oh my gosh, but see how, oh, it's so busy. It's so I almost pretty. don't like it. It's just the block is so busy. Oh, I think it's lovely. It's a little much for me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move the sewing machine off. Okay. Thanks. Sorry, we're moving the sewing machine off. Okay. Just to have a little bit more room. Okay, so I press to one side. Oh my gosh, Lily, you like this block? I hate it. I do. I think it looks really cool. Oh, it's a little bit too modern for me. I think Especially I should have picked a different block for this. Oh, <laughs> a I, different fabric. I really like that you got the stripes all going the right way. It's just so busy. Okay, I'm gonna show it. I'll show it next to the, all the rest in a second. But oh, it's a little much. Okay, and a few people are wondering how you were cutting the thread on your sewing machine. Is it a knee bar? On the Juki 20LQ that I have, you can cut your foot on this. It's the foot pedal. And so when you sew, you go this way. I don't have it plugged in so I can hit it. But then when I wanna cut my thread with my heel, I go and it cuts the thread. Mm -hmm. So that's how I cut the thread. That's really cool. It's with my foot. And that is what I do at home too. Mm -hmm. I don't even use, I've never, I don't, I don't use the other cutter. Mm -hmm. I just have to find something that I've just moved. Hold on. What did I do with the rotary cutter? Do you see it? Uh, I do not see it. Okay, I got it. Yeah, I found it. Okay. Okay, so here's my rotary cutter. And Riley, uh, not Riley Blake, Checker made a new Creative Grids ruler. It's called the Fatty or something like that. Ooh. And I can't wait to see if I like it because it's like eight and a half by 24 and a half or something like oh. that. I'm waiting for it to come. I'm like okay. ready for that thing to come because I'm thinking, oh, that might be really good. Yeah, because right now they have a six and a half by 24 mm -hmm. and a half, right? And I think it's called the Big Fatty. The Big Fatty. <laughs> I, I mean, I need to wait till it gets here, but that's what I thought it was called. Yeah. That does sound like something I need as well. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm, I've been waiting for it to show up. Okay. Now I'm going to put this with the rest of the blocks and we're going to see how it looks. Okay, so I've got this block. Yeah, you can take these, okay. I think, and then th that we can leave there if you yeah. want. It's up to you. Okay. So we get these boxes at Target. They're yes. just in the like wedding section or gift section. Mm -hmm. um, so because I did three different grays, three greens, I'm gonna show you how I would lay this out. I would do, now this is just a guess. I'll just put them kind of like this. That way you can see them a little bit more. I'll do like gray and then peach across and then a peach down here. Where's my other peach? I just saw it. Maybe I haven't made it. No, it's not. Well, you, 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 you showed it. Pretty sure because you were how it would match up. Oh, yeah, here it is. So I put my peach here and then my green. Mm. So that's kind of how I would distribute the fabric, is kind of like that, like lines, like diagonal lines. Or you could do it random. 
but I do think having this in the center grounds it because, but this does not look good. See that? So the fact that I have two stripes, ooh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Oh, next to each other. What if you switch that one with the one in the bottom corner? Left corner? Yeah. So that might look better, but I don't love it. Mm. Like I don't love this block. But if I do it, I'll probably put my stripes different because that way they're not so. Oh. But I don't like, I don't like this. So I might have to, maybe next week I'll do another gray block and, and use this for the back. Mm -hmm. That's what we'll do. Okay. I'll find a different gray. I'll take these home, find a different, because I don't like this. Mm -hmm. And if I don't like it, that's okay. But it's going on the back. I don't like it. I'm going to put a different, I don't, I can't stand it. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. We'll do another nine inch block next week. Mm -hmm. I'll have to find out how much background I have here, starch something, but I will be here next Friday because I'm gonna go on vacation tomorrow and I don't know what day we're gonna come back. We're just gonna wing it. We're just going to like a the middle of nowhere until we can't stand it anymore. Are you coming back before Friday? Yeah. So now I'm gonna show you that was Socialites Block 22. Yes. Yesterday. Nice. We showed Serendipity, row one. This is our charity quilt. And I am making it just like this. And it is around the 1st and the 15th of the month. And um, we do have a chart when we're gonna do videos. But yesterday I showed a video on how to make this block. I will continue and make the entire row. And I'm gonna show you blocks from different collections so that you can see just a different look so that you can see that you can use this with your own fabrics. It uses 11 half yards, but you could do 22 fat quarters. You can do it scrappy. Teresa made these. These are American gatherings. And we raised $39,714 so far. Oh my gosh, it just keeps growing. Yes. So I'm gonna kind of point out some things that the different um, sample makers did. Oh, so she'll alternate. So what I'm thinking she did, now I'm just totally guessing, is she did three with the red and three with the blue, and she kept these the same. So you've got three, so when she lays it out, she'll probably do like a blue, red, blue, red. Now I'm guessing, mm -hmm. but blue, red. So she kind of evened out the distribution of her fabric which is a great idea mm -hmm. so that's the first one this is American gatherings collection by Lisa Bonjean it's the same fabric we're going to be using for the American sew along by Lisa Bonjean yeah. American quilter sew along yes these are the whatnot collection by Ruby Star Society and it's a collaboration between the different designers and Kate made these and so she used the blue toothbrush fabric as the background and then alternated the bright colors. Oh, that's fun. I didn't know those were toothbrushes. Oh yeah, so these are toothbrushes. So she'll probably alternate. Let's see. Let's see what I would do. I would probably do this. Ah. Like the blues and then. This one's a little bright, so I'd probably hide it on the end. I'd probably, I'd probably do that. Mm. Do that or put it over here. Or put it maybe in the center. Just this one alternates a little bit. So that is, let's see, what not by Ruby Star and that one they did a collaboration so it's a lot of their designers mm -hmm. the next one is confection boutiques by Kate Spain and we rarely buy well I don't want to say we rarely buy boutiques but boutiques are not like the best seller for us by any means but we did buy this collection so this is what you, you could just use scraps from your boutiques if you are a boutique collector or if you're in the boutique fat quarter club with us you could do use up all your scraps and so on this one she used the dark blue as her background and the light blue as the accent so this block if you watched yesterday it has a background an accent and then each fabric has six each block has six different fabrics 
So that is confection batiks. Mm -hmm. And then the next two already sewed theirs into rows, which is great because mm -hmm. then I don't have to guess what they're going to do. Nancy made this one, and this is, I'm going to, it's Blooming Bunch by Maureen McCormick. I'm going to hold it up, actually, oh. so you can see. Okay. Oh, it's so pretty. Wait, hold on. I love that fabric. Okay, am I in the center? You are in the center. Because part of the thing is off. Oh, yes, I see. You're centered. So look at that. So she did a white background, whereas if you look behind me, the quote behind me, it's got a dark background. Mm -hmm. So I will say that this collection, we have gotten so many questions on what do I make with it? What do I make with it? What do I make with it? Maybe this is your answer. Mm -hmm. Putting a white really makes these fabrics pop. Mm -hmm. It just reminds me of my kitchen when I was a little kid because I had mm. orange daisies. Sounds lovely. I know, it looks good. And then the next one is M Mill Creek Garden by Jan Paddock. So I'll lay it down and then show it in the front. And this one was sewn by Carrie. Sorry, <laughs> the camera's opposite. So this one, she did a darker mm -hmm. sashing. So by showing you all of these, you can see that you can make the charity quilt your own. Our main goal for this is to raise money for Make-A-Wish. Maybe we can get over 40,000 before we end the show. I'll keep checking. Um, and then I'm gonna, okay, let me know if there's any questions on socialites or serendipity mm -hmm. real quick. Mm -hmm. Put these back really nice. Now this one, she used a gray fabric, a gray thread, I wanna show that. Um, she used kind of a middle gray thread. It looks like 2,600. So when you're working with um, a fabric like this, if you use a really light thread, it will show up. Mm -hmm. And this one blends. Smart. Because when you, yeah, you'll start seeing thread if you use too dark or too light of a thread. Mm -hmm. All right. First thing, apparently the new Creative Grids ruler is 12 and a half by 24 and a half, and it's called the Big Easy. Okay, so I was totally wrong. <laughs> exactly. What did you say? <laughs> the Big Easy, and it's 12 and a half by 24 and a half. Oh, yeah. I was close. Yeah. Just four and a half inches off. I mean, really. But I haven't seen it, so I'm, I'm very excited to get it. Yeah. So that when you're doing um, like borders that you need, I mean, it'll really help you do borders. Mm -hmm. The right. big easy. So that's like a play on New Orleans, maybe? Big easy, isn't that, it's a movie or something? I don't know. Mm. They should have called it the big whatever I said. What did I call it? <laughs> I think you call it the big fatty or something. Big fatty, I thought it was. <laughs> that's a cute name. It is a cute name, I like that it. That would be like a cute dog name. The big fat, oh, new fatty. Awesome. Yeah, see? <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, we had a new YouTube member, Brandy Roller. Welcome, Brandy. Thank you. And super chat from Jan Bell for $5. Thank you so much, Jan. Thank you. And then another super chat from Betty Williams for $10. And Betty put that pair that's dancing around saying number one fan. Thank you. And then Laura Olson, new YouTube member. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. And then Super Chat from Valeria Bauer for $19.99. And she says, you are amazing. Oh, thank you. So Valeria, uh, a few people yesterday were joking that Valeria's Super Chats probably bought her new camera because Valeria, I think every single live stream puts in a Super Chat for us. Um, so Valeria, actually, I wanted to ask, we got a new computer for the live streaming. And I wanted to ask if you would name it. So let me know in the comments if you could yeah. name it, please. On the comments. Yeah. Okay. And then super chat from Susan Jeffries for four ninety nine, and Susan says the close ups possible with the new camera are very helpful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you. It makes me a little nervous because I um I'm get I kind of get in my head because I'm thinking. I'm looking, I'm doing this, but then I'm over here looking over here. So I've got three things mm -hmm. going on. So that's why sometimes I forget words is because I'm trying to watch myself, I'm mm -hmm. trying to do it, and I'm trying to think of words. So that's why I kind of stumble a little bit. Well, we can but work I'll get used to it eventually. You know, it's just yeah. new, I'll get used to it. Yeah, and we can workshop the angle and see if we can get a monitor or something so you can see it better. Um, Nancy Garden said, yes, New Orleans is referred to as a big easy. 
All right, and one more super chat from Shelly Murphy for $5. Shelly says, have a great time at the ranch. Make sure the kids wear jeans when they ride horses. The horse hair may bother their skin. I've yes. ridden all my life. Yeah, so I rode horses one time in Alaska with my dad. And um, that was the, what happened to me. I itched like crazy. Mm-hmm. And um, But yeah, that was a really funny thing. Because my mom is not, she's a little bit like me. She's kind of like, she doesn't really want to like go outside and do a bunch of stuff. So we, just me and my dad, uh, went on this horseback trip. And then she did something with someone else. Like, we didn't leave her alone, basically. She did something else. I don't remember what she did. This was like, I was like 21. And so they get, the, you know, when you go, they asked, okay, who, you know, blah, 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 all these questions. They gave my dad the horse that was mean and would like do crazy stuff. So if I had a, I wish I had a video of that because my dad was very funny, like, very funny and I just remember him cracking jokes the whole time because the 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 horse didn't like him and so he would like talk to the horse for like an hour so it was hilarious (laughs) okay so I did want to show you this this is our first milestone for our donations and this is a completely free pattern that we're giving you and we do these milestones throughout um, the program just to keep our donations going and keep everybody interested. And we will have more, um, let's see, this is the milestone for 20,000. And then we have uh, some free patterns at 30, 40, and 50. So this makes a um, table runner that finishes at 22 by 55. And it takes that block we just did yesterday and that I just showed you in all those other fabrics and it's got two, 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 and then one. And this is the Jardin de Fleur fabric by French General. Angel designed this with Jocelyn. Terry sewed it, and Gina quilted it with the Frescoes Flowers pantograph. And I really love the binding. Yeah. I love how the front and the back, I love the combination of all of this. And this is 13529. It's one of the 13529s. Mm. I don't think we wrote down. But if you, um, yeah, it's 13529 is the first part of the skew. But this is one of our, so I'll show it in the front too. And I'll show the back oh. too, because the back is really nice. So pretty. Yes. So the back. The houses are going this way, so you could put it on a table. See how the houses go? So you could even use this as a as um, oh, a different part of the season. Yeah. Like, if That's you wanted good. to use this in spring and this and that, you could use it as a double-sided because it's got a whole scenery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I probably, when I quilted that, I would have put the houses going this way. Mm-hmm. But that's the beauty of fabric and quilting and everybody does it their own way. That's the beauty of it. Um, and you could even, she could even like, if you wanted to um, hang it, you could hang it off of a, like a um, fireplace or bookshelf. You could hang it and it could go straight up and down because it's done this way. Because mm. I do hang a lot of table runners off of my fireplace because I don't trust my children. So the I make table runners, but they're never used as table runners. They're either in a basket mm. or, um, ugh, hold on, I'll tell you a funny story. They're either in a basket, rolled up, or they are um, hanging off. But this is how I roll them in a basket, and I'll show you what children do when you do this. So I'm gonna take this little piece of paper off real quick and show you how I roll them up in my baskets. No, I'm not, I don't know how to do it. Okay, okay, so this is what I do. And this also keeps them from becoming wrinkled. So uh, you can just get a basket at like Michael's, Home Goods. Um, woohoo! Lily is telling me the donations passed 40,000. Yay, thank Yay. you. So if you have a bucket, you can put them in the bucket like this. This is what I do, okay? But I have children, you know what they do? They pull it out of the bucket and they go like that and they hit each other. I'm not kidding. And that hurts. So sometimes I have to like really get mad about them taking it out and hitting each other because they well they they do um they watch WWE and all the wrestling there's like Impact wrestling there's like all this wrestling like it's ridiculous but they wrestle each other and they do the moves and so oh my goodness yeah this 
It's it's a quilt fight instead of a pillow fight. Yes, and yes. But you know, I don't have to watch wrestling for like three days. It's on tonight. <laughs> so on Fridays, okay, before COVID, we couldn't go eat on certain days of the week on Fridays and Sundays because on Sundays there is a pay-per-view that we pay for, which is absolutely ridiculous. And those kids, I mean, even sometimes Emma watches it. I mean, they are like pumped for it. WWE has the best marketing. If you watch their marketing, I'm not kidding. They have the best marketing. They have a podcast. The podcast gets all the people that wrestle on there. It kind of, they tease what's going to happen. I mean, the kids are so into it. They're because they're reaching the podcast, the YouTube, the I don't even know, but they do have um, really good marketing. Mm -hmm. Denise Pineda said, whack-a-mole. Oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. So yeah, that's what I would do. I'll roll. So now we're gonna, I'm gonna take a little tiny, tiny break. Lily's gonna come chat. Ooh. And then I'm gonna come back and show you like some blocks I've sewn. Mm -hmm. But yes, I am gonna take my blocks home because I don't like that one. I'm gonna change it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go this way. Is that okay? Yeah, the, we can't the other way because of the camera now. Oh, okay, sorry. No, you're good. Oh my God. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Do, do, Hello, everyone. My name is Lily, as a lot of you already know, voice behind the camera and videographer here. And today I actually want to talk to you guys about a kind of common question Ashley and I are seeing a lot in the comments. Um, and I think it's just good information to have because this applies to any other YouTuber who puts stuff in their description. So a lot of you guys by now are familiar with, oh, links in description, links in the comments, check the check the links below, the show notes. Um, so we call them the show notes here. Those are links that Ashley gathers for everyone so that when you're watching the live stream, you can actually like follow along and like as Kimberly shows things, we have links to everything that we know of that she's gonna show beforehand. So I wanna talk to you guys a little bit about how that works and how you can use them uh, best to your advantage while you're watching the show. Um, Cause I remember a few people saying like, oh, like I'm watching and I'm taking notes over here, which is awesome, but we've done that work for you. So, or Ashley has, big shout out to Ashley there. So if you're watching on YouTube right now, what you would do is um, on your phone, you would have to close out your chat first. On desktop, uh, it's already there. And then you just click the little arrow that says show more or down at the bottom show more. Um, and then there's a whole description that opens up. And like I said, they're kind of in the show order so you can follow along. And most of the links link back to Fat Quarter Shop since most of the things we're showing are from Fat Quarter Shop. But we also have like when Kimberly says, oh, well, you can find this on Amazon. If we can find the link on Amazon, we'll put it in there. Um, and the little tricky thing we've had to start doing is that YouTube has a character count for this description box and putting all these links in there since we're showing a lot of cool things, uh, we reach that character count very quickly. So Ashley has started doing this thing where she will put a, a link at the very top right underneath the description of, you know, where it says like join Kimberly for this awesome live stream right underneath that there's all the links, links to everything from the show. If you click that one, it opens up on a separate page um, totally safe page to go to and right there you will find everything from the show and if anything extra gets shown or added that's not already there Ashley adds it right back in right after the show and so anytime you're wondering like oh where can I get all the stuff that they're showing here it's so much stuff just click that very first link and it takes you out there you can still scroll through the rest of the description box we put what we consider the most relevant links in there the biggest things that we're showing but if you want every single little thing that very first top one is going to take you there um but yeah so let me know if anyone has questions on that there were some questions beforehand that kind of came in that i could answer from uh janie wheeler markham she was asking if i sewed before i started working at fat quarter shop i did actually i've been sewing one of my aunts taught me to sew when i was like seven or eight um, she taught, she helped me make a little t-shirt. Um, two of my aunts are seamstresses on my mom's side and one on my dad's side. And I spent a lot of time in my childhood around all of them. And like, they would make like their own buttons and like full seamstressing work for like the neighborhood. And like, they had their own businesses. So 
I grew up around a lot of that and they taught me so much. So I really started in garment making because of that, because that's what they would do. Um, and then later on, like in high school, I got into a little bit more costuming and thought I was going to go into like theater and costuming for a little bit. Um, and I do enjoy that, but I was like, no, filmmaking's my calling. Making videos out there is my calling. Um, anyway, so sewing. And then when I started working at Fat Quarter Shop, I was like, well, of course I sew. I'm going to try to make a quilt. And now I'm quilting. So it's all very exciting. And let's see, Wilma Evans was asking, can I do that on the iPad? Yes, you can for the description. You most certainly can. It does show up on your iPad. Um, yes, YouTube can be kind of funky with certain things on iPad, but luckily the description is not one of them. And let's see, uh, Angela also had a question related to her iPad, I believe. She said, if you're a member, is there a way to be notified of the coupons and videos? You keep missing them. And I did see later on, you said you were on your iPad. So my best recommendation there is, first of all, to have that little bell after you're subscribed to our channel. Make sure to hit that bell and hit all notifications because um, that will notify you of all, your, all, all of our videos, but also anytime we post anything in the community tab. And all of your member perks are going to be found in our community tab, the Fat Quarter Shop community tab. My other recommendation there is to go into your YouTube settings. Um, and there's uh, YouTube has different like help articles to help you get there to the YouTube settings. And what you do in there is you go to your notification settings from all of YouTube and go to email and make sure your email settings are turned on. YouTube has stopped sending a lot of email notifications except for the membership stuff, uh, to my knowledge. Let me know if anyone hasn't been getting that through their email. But if you have notifications through email turned on from YouTube and you have that little bell with all selected for a fat quarter shop, then they will, as soon as we post some a new member perk, it will get sent directly into your email, um, which I'm technically one of the YouTube members too, just so I, I'm, making sure everything's working from our end and that everyone's getting their stuff how they should be. And that's what I do. So anytime it will be really funny, like either Ashley and I will post a YouTube members only thing and it'll pop up on my email immediately on my phone. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. We just did that. Um, but yes, if you guys have questions about that, always feel free to let us know in the comments and we will do the best we can to help. And I think that's all the questions I'm seeing. So I will hand it back over to Kimberly and thank you for having me again. Do do do. Thank you. Yeah. So I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek of something that is not on the website yet, but it is going to be. Oh my goodness. So this came in last night at 5 p.m. Oh my I haven't goodness. even seen it. But it's not on the website, so don't just wait a couple hours. It'll yes. be on the website later today. Just give us some time because it literally just got here. So, this is oh so pretty. I'm taking, it, taking one home. So pretty. So, we had these book stands made for Lori. This one is called the Bee's Knees Book Stand. It's the blossom colorway, though. So, it comes in this box, so it won't come damaged. So, this is the box it comes in. And so, you can put your cross-stitch books, when you're stitching or you can put your quilt books. And so especially for Lori's books, which are spiral bound, that's why she made this because her books, and she made it really fat right here. So her books, when you're cutting a block, you can just put it right here and it's gonna give you a lot more space on your cutting table. But I just saw this, like I would, when, when I take a break, I go to the bathroom because I drink a lot of Starbucks on the way. And um, so, uh, I saw it and I was like, I can't resist showing you. So I'm excited. I'm gonna just leave it here because it's so cute. But it's not online yet. It will be showed up late, late yesterday. So let me see what I'm gonna show first. To celebrate Worldwide Quilting Day or World Peace Day. Okay, I'm gonna show it here first. Oh. We come up, we came up with this completely free pattern. It is using the Pin Drop Collection by Christopher Thompson for Riley Blake. This uses triangle paper H350 and H175. Jocelyn designed it, Nancy sewed it, and Mike quilted this from mylongarm.com using Panto 8111. 
So this is all on the blog. We're going to have a lot of um, giveaways with it and hashtags and all of that. So check it out on the blog. I did want to show the quilting on it, Ooh. the thread used. So one of the things that I always struggle, well, I don't want to say struggle with, but I'm very picky about the thread that I use. And this looks really good. So he used an aqua mm. and it doesn't look like it matches on the screen because of the camera, but it matches 100%. <laughs> so this aqua, I love the quilting because I really like the fact that we were able to match the thread. And so there's prizes and we're gonna have winners and all of that is on the blog. And this is so cute. It's just something fun you can do um, on the weekend. And I wanna show you the back. So this is actually C120, which is a confetti cotton. And these are the pin drops. And you don't really notice the pins, right? They're just like a little accent. Yeah. But they look, look at the back. So you can really see it when it's not cut up. So I just kind of, it's very cute. Oh, it's so cute. So that is something new that we have on our site this week. And we do have a quilt kit. And I have been sewing along on the Riley Blake block challenge is what it's called. This is block five. It's a mystery quilt with 16 blocks and they finish it 10 and a half inches unfinished and then 10 inches finished. It um, started February, so we're on block five. There are three blocks released each month. And so I am using the Prim collection. I'm using four fabrics, the mint, pink, white, and brown, or cream and brown. Now to make this, to make it quicker, I used um, triangles on a roll H250, which is two and a half inches finished. And um, I am using, um, Bev McCullough came up with this idea to use her Sashiko machine from Baby Lock. And so I'm doing the same thing. And I'm using a lighter thread that's not showing up very much because I'm very nervous about it because I really don't have a lot of experience with the machine and I didn't want to like overpower my block. So that is my block five. And next week I'll show you block six. Another thing that I've been sewing, I know Lily will like this. Mm -hmm. So um, yes. these again are those little boxes that we get at Target. Target. And so I'm kind of keeping this one all in a box because there's a lot going on with this one. And um, so this is the booklet from Moda. It's called My Favorite Color is Moda. And this is um, one of the colorways. There's a couple of colorways that they have shown on their website. And so it's very scrappy. So I thought it would be fun to make a quilt using modern fabric because sometimes y'all comment and say that I make all the same things, but I do, I make what I like. So I had to figure out a way to use fabrics that I'm not necessarily in my color palette, but that I can be useful. So my sister-in-law is very modern. So I am gonna make this for her. Now this, I took the fat quarter bundle from January and February. I don't think I have marches in here yet, but I, but I honestly can't remember. So I starch them. You can tell they're starch because they, make your, hold on, let's see if it stands up. See, it stands up. Oh. It'll stand up. So I'm going to show you what I've done so far, and this is going to be her Christmas gift. So this is block one. It's ginormous. Mm -hmm. So I've shown this before. So this uses all of January's fabrics. And on this, I used H500 to make these triangles. So this is block one. But the block, put it right there. Okay, let me show you it in the front. It's pretty big. That's one block. One block. Wow. It didn't take me very long though. Oh. Okay, so that's block one. Now I didn't do block two yet, and I'll tell you why in a second. I skipped and went to block three and four, oh. but there's a reason why. I'll show you in a second. So this is, um, let me open it to see which block it is. Cause you know, I made this a couple weeks ago and I can't remember. 
So block two is this. Ooh. Okay, now, these, I made a mistake, and these two fabrics, I do not believe are in the bundle. I think that I got the wrong fabric. So you would have to switch these two if you're copying exactly what I'm doing. But to me, it looks fine. So I did use some fabric that accidentally isn't in the bundle, but I'm not unsewing it. And I think it looks really good. Mm -hmm. um, and I think she'll like this. She's very into, um, she does antique, like for a living, she does like, she trades antiques or something like that. So oh. she, everything in her house is vintage. Like she re, she bought a, well, anyway, she's in a condo, but she redid it with all vintage cabinets. She took out new cabinets and put in vintage. So I thought she would like that. So that's block two. And on this one, when I did it, one of the things that I did do is I made this the normal way. And then when I did these, I made them larger, just a little bit, and then trimmed down my block with the square ruler. So that's block two. And then this is block three. Now we're getting into February and March fabrics. Ooh. And so there's some little bunnies. It's so pretty. Yeah, so the reason I did block one, two, and three is when you get, hold on. I can't show the instructions, but I want to show you why. I kind of went in that order. When you get to assembly, it's one, two, and three. So I thought, well, before I do two, no, sorry, it's one, three, four. Before I do block two, which is somewhere else in here, I can at least sew these together, have section one done. And when I was looking at block two, which I'll show you in a second. Oh, wait, no. I did what block one, two, and four. Sorry, so I left block three out. So I did one, two, and four. This is block three. I didn't have fabrics that I thought would look good enough in here either. And I didn't want to reuse the same fabrics that I just used on a very similar block. So next month I will sew with March's fabric. So this is a combination of January and February. So I now, um, I will show you March's fabric and I will have all three of these assembled. It's going to be a pretty big quilt. Um, so it's kind of intense, but it's it's fun to do something that forces me out of my color palette. But this one, I will be super honest and say I have really struggled with trying to get the fabrics to look right. And just so that it kind of looks good because I'm not used to using these type of fabrics. So I've struggled a little bit, but that's okay. She won't care. She, she won't notice. She'll think it's great. Um. So that is my favorite color is Moda. The next thing I've been working on is Stitchery Sampler. Okay, this is block 10. This is the most difficult block in the whole thing. It took me like five hours to do this. I'm not even kidding. Oh, wow. It took forever. So these are one by two inch flying geese. So you could use this paper. I did not, and I'll tell you why. If you use this paper, it's great, but when you get to seam three, just press to the inside after you take your paper off, which will work and will be fine. But I, I, um, I tried it a couple of different ways. So can you scroll in a little bit? So I kind of tried a couple of different ways and you're gonna see that. So I did this one, doing the paper, pressing to one side, but then I just didn't feel like it was very flat. Mm. I just, I wasn't, I wasn't liking it. So I ended up doing the rest all pressed open. Mm. So sometimes I'll do that. I'll test something and see what I think. Now over here, you've got, um, they're basically assembled the same way as flying geese. They're just corner squares. But this block took four Ever. And I think it does look good, but even though I pressed open, look how, like it's very bumpy. But this is block 10. One thing that I did do is on these outer strips, I did cut them about half inch bigger 
and then trimmed down so that my block would be a little bit more accurate. So if you do the paper, you would just do it um, similar to this. I just kind of felt like there was it was just not lying. And now when I look at it, actually it looks a lot neater than the others, but at the time I was not digging it. But this is a mess. I mean, that is a hot mess right there. But this one was very difficult. And I also went ahead, this is Stitchery Sampler by Joanna Figueroa of Fig Tree Quilts. We have kits left. And she is showing some tips on her YouTube channel. So I believe this is the way that it goes from the front camera. So this is kind of the first three rows. Mm -hmm. I really like this. And I really like the size of it because it's not going to end up being too, too big. So mm -hmm. I could actually put it on a couch where I think people will use it. One thing I am thinking of doing, I'll show you real quick. I've never done it before, so I might, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna maybe do it because I'm not sure it's gonna work out, but I want something in our living room that has Shannon fabric on the back, mm -hmm. but I also want my label in it. Mm -hmm. But I don't really have any experience working with um, Shannon. Can you do the top camera? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't really sure. So I was thinking what I would do is like, maybe make this go in the center of the back mm -hmm. and put cotton fabric over here mm -hmm. and then add Shannon up here and here. Because I think if I tried to do Shannon and then Shannon, it would be too much. So I think I'm gonna do a cotton print here and then the, the really fuzzy stuff up here. Mm -hmm because then it'll still be comfortable, but I just was like trying to think of doing all that. And I thought that's not gonna come out very good. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I'm gonna get the best results with. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my idea. So I do plan the backing as I go. Wait, questions before we move on. Oh yes, questions. Uh, let's see, uh, from Arlie Hudson 50 Hudson, will the people in the notify me when in stock get notified first of the book stand? Yes, and it will not sell out today, don't worry. We bought, Tons and tons. Yay. But yes, you will get notified. But it literally came in like when I was walking out the door yesterday and we didn't, usually when we get big shipments, we know in advance, but it came on a freight truck. So when it comes on a freight truck, you don't usually know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so excited. I, I'm not supposed to show it, I know. We're gonna get all kinds of people upset, but I had to show it. It's so pretty. Because what's gonna happen is it's not gonna be able to be searchable yet. Oh yeah, Don't because it, on the it website. takes twenty four hours for that to work. So just check the what's new page in a couple hours. Yes. From Amy Lynn thirteen forty five with the stitchery quilt box. Can you starch the fabric? Will there be enough in the box to do that? I started with sample yardage, but I think there should be enough okay. if you just really watch where you cut. Um, and they're so scrappy with that quilt. To be honest, there's, it's so scrappy that if you moved a couple of pieces around, it's not going to matter. But I did start with about what the fabric, basically I took Joanna's, because I, I got it in advance. I um, took her fabric requirements, ordered it, ordered sample yardage of it, and started with the same amount. Mm -hmm. A few people were asking, what is Shannon fabric? Okay, so Shannon fabric is called Cuddle, and it's basically a minky type fabric. And um, we have done several videos with Teresa, Co Teresa Coates from Shannon. Mm -hmm. And it is basically a really soft, cuddle. Fuzzy. Fuzzy, yeah. polyester. Super soft. Yeah, super soft. But it is um, not something that you want to put in your sewing room too often because when you cut it, basically when I cut it, what I will do, I'm not kidding, I will cut it once for that middle seam and I will get a, what do we, we have it, it's like a portable vacuum cleaner. Oh yeah. And I will immediately pick up all the lint. Yes. So I'm not somebody who could use that and make like a piece quilt with applique and all kinds yes. of stuff because that fuzz will drive me nuts. But that's why I was like, oh, so I'm trying to figure out the best way to just get it. And it does come wider than 44 inches. Mm -hmm. So it's good because you get more mm -hmm. and you have less, um, less yardage you have to buy. So do figure that in because you get more of a width. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, Teresa calls the little things, the little fuzzies that fly out, cuddle dust. And I think that's- Cuddle dust. Cuddle dust. Yes. 
right. And then funny comment from Crafting a Planned Life about uh, when you were talking about the bulky seams. She said, hit it with a rubber mallet. Would that help flatten the seams? <laughs> yeah, it would. All right. It's, um, it's very um, fuzzy. So we have some new items I wanted to show you. This one is so beautiful, and there is a picture of it sewn on Moda's uh, Instagram and Facebook, and it is so pretty. It is a brand new quilt kit. It comes packaged in this box. It's a sanctuary kit. Now, I think it's beautiful. We didn't buy a ton of them because um, I wasn't exactly sure how many people would attempt this Lone Star but it is beautiful. I saw it yesterday on Instagram and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So it's called Peace Quilt Kit and it's so pretty. And I mean, I would love to make everything except the star. The star looks scary. It looks so scary. Cause that is like a 90 degree or I don't know. That's like a, you can't cheat with a, if I can't make it with triangle paper, I can't make it. Mm -hmm. So that, but I, but I really do like it and wanted to show it because I saw it on Instagram. The next kit I'm gonna show you is one of our Jolly Bar designs. So with our Jolly Bar quilts, they come, with our Jolly Bars that we sell, they come with a pattern included. And this one is called Early Light. And um, I think this is gonna be so popular. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me get it straight. Okay, I'm gonna show it from the front. So it is called Early Light. The fabric is America the Beautiful by Deb Strain. Angel designed this, Nova sewed it, and Gina quilted it. And so everything in here is from the Jolly Bar except for the light blue solid. So you get to really use up all that fabric. Oh. See how chop, you, you really, and see how on the bottom we used all the fabric? Oh, so cool. Yes, it's so nice. And then, oh, also this right here. You would have to buy yardage for mm. this stripe. There's not enough. If you put this in there, it would have been too busy. Mm -hmm. And the backing's really pretty too. I'm gonna show you the back. Cause on the back, you can really see the quilting. Well, actually you can't. I'll show you, hold on. So here's the back. But if you look on the front, you can see Gina's quilting oh. the stars. Wow. So kind of took the stars from here, took that theme and worked it into the quilting. Mm -hmm. So really pretty. And of course, you know, when you're making it, you could always, if you had a white solid or you, you know, you don't have to use this exact fabric. It does come in the quilt kit, but if you, you know, you could swap that if you don't, you know, you're on a budget and don't want to buy the kit. You just want to buy the Jolly Bar. And then we got some new bundles. So I'm just gonna show them all to you. This is on the go, right? Yes. Or on the move. On the go. On the go, I said it right. Oh my gosh, for once I said it right. By Stacey Itsu, I love this. Yeah, so cute. I wish that it would have come out when I, my boys were little. <laughs> so pretty. And then Sanctuary, this is the one um, that I just showed you by Three Sisters, so the same fabric. Also so pretty. Oh my gosh. This one is Flowers for Freya. And this is actually a follow up to a collection that we received in December of 2019 that we could not keep in stock. Off the top of my head, I can't think of the name of that collection, but it was such, it was so popular with Moda that they, it's not a reprint, but it's a to go with very closely, is what I would call it. Uh, I just made that word up, by the way. To go with very closely. Yeah. This is. Dwell in Possibilities by Ginger Burr. Oh, also so pretty. And it has got a lot of metallic. It's really, really pretty. And the last one from Moda that we got this week is Thatched. And last night, we also received the Thatched Yardage. <gasps> so that is now online. And I want to show you, they have added, the navy is what we used on the quilt behind me, which is the charity quilt, but they have added some new blues and purples. Yes, so they added, um, I think this is gonna be, I do think this will sell better in yardage than it will in the bundle, but these are gonna be really popular. People are gonna throw this in all kinds of quilts. This white will work great in a modern quilt, but it will look great in any other quilt too. Mm -hmm. So I love when there's fabrics that can be used for, you know, all kinds of styles. 
So those are the new Moda bundles. Also, the one that goes with flowers for Freya is Flower Garden. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone in the chat. This one is Land of Liberty, and this is one of my favorite Riley Blake groups that has come out. I think this is going to sell out. This mm -hmm. is so pretty. Um, this, The florals in this is what I love. Now, I do like the Americana prints, but the florals really make it. Because sometimes when you do Americana, you get so many of the prints that are Americana, but the floral really pulls it together. So, really pretty. It's called Land of Liberty by My Mind's Eye. And then we got in a lot of K-Facet pre-cuts yesterday. I only brought the bundles because there's just too many. But his stuff, it just, I, people buy it like crazy. So um, they did a lot of pre-cuts this time. They did fat quarter bundles, and then they did some six-inch rolls. Some, you know, they did a lot of pre-cuts. So there's a lot of different colorways. And when they put those together, sometimes they put the fat quarter bundles might have different skews than the other pre-cuts. So there's a cool and a hot. But, you know, just, let's see which one is cool and which one. I guess this one's hot and this one's cool. But um, sometimes uh, customers get confused because they'll do a cool and a hot fat quarter bundle, but then they'll do something else for the rolls. So they do that just, you know, just so you know, that might get confusing. So that's what I have today, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. From Cheryl Lilly, is the early light quilt big enough for a quilt of valor? Oh, I'm not sure. Let me tell you the size of it, and then we can look that up. Can you Google yeah. that? So the finished size is, sorry, Lily, you'll have to put this back together, okay. 54 inches square. So it has to be, for a Quilts of Valor, a minimum of 55 by 65 and maximum of 72 by 90. So you would have to add to the bottom. You would have to add to the side about half an inch, which is doable. And on the bottom and the top, you would need to add, tell me again the size. 55 by 65 minimum you would need to add about six inches to the top and six inches to the bottom and what you could do um, if you look at the screen you could take um, these rows because I already put the quilt too far away for me to get sorry okay. um, so you could add by a second jolly bar and just add more down here Ooh. and more up here and then you could just make this a little bit wider and, or you could just add a little bit and then do an all over border. But I think if you just added, you know, like an inch to this side and then some rows up here and down, it would work. You would just need two Jolly Bars. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you do need yardage of this. Mm -hmm. But the Jolly Bars are spread throughout here and here. Mm -hmm. And question about the same quilt from Katrina E. Could you starch the Jolly Bar in that quilt? Um, I don't I don't know, but I'm gonna look right now. I'm gonna really tear it apart. Um, if you do a jolly bar shrinks. If you what? I think a jolly bar if you starch it it shrinks this way. It shrinks um on the width. No. You could put you could buy you could buy an extra jolly bar and make it work. Mm -hmm. Or a layer cake? Well, you don't get the pattern. You have oh, to have the pattern right. for the jelly that's bar. Right. So, um, yeah, you'd have to make it work with two. And then what you could do here, I can show this way, is on this, G, you know, obviously this, you would just need to add some more. So when you get over here to doing this, Hold on, when you get to here where it's got A's and B's, you would just add some more, mm. but you would add more to the top and bottom. But when you cut this G, which is your outer skinny border, mm -hmm. you would make that wider. Mm. So what you could do is take the pattern and I would literally with a pencil just kind of start drawing lines and then figure out your math from that. Mm -hmm. And earlier, Wendy Iris was wondering what you are watching. Oh, what I'm watching. So I've been watching Sundance. I've been watching um, that chapter, which is a true crime channel. I watch, um, let me think of, Keto and Crime. I it's, She's just like a random 
uh, you know, random YouTuber. Mm -hmm. She only has like 4,000 followers. Um, I watch Dr. Todd Grande. I love his show. He posts every day and he's a psychologist or psychiatrist, one of the two. Like he's a medical doctor or a doctor or whatever. And he just takes cases in the world. And you know, one of the reasons I really like him, I feel like he's positive and I don't watch, I don't watch TV. So I, for example, didn't watch the Harry and Meghan thing. I don't mm. have any interest in watching it for whatever reason. I, nothing about them. I just don't, I just don't watch TV. So I watched his summary of it so that I would at least have a clue what's going on in the world. But I like him because there's nothing negative and he just gives his opinion. And so I've been watching a lot of his stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's just a YouTuber. He films in his house. He has a ton of followers though. Every time, I mean, every time I watch him, he has more and more. I also watch Crime Talk with Scott Rice. He is a defense lawyer from Colorado, I think. Ooh. All right, and then a few new YouTube members that have been joining. Deanna Wilson, new YouTube member. Welcome, Deanna. Thank you. And new YouTube member, Gigi Lewis. Welcome, Gigi. Thank you. And Nancy Profiter, new YouTube member. Welcome, Nancy. Yay. And then, so at your style, uh, I missed this question during my segment, but they had asked me what the most complicated garment I've worked on is. I will also ask you, Kimberly, what the most complicated quilt you've worked on is. And I'll let you go ahead and answer first. Oh, you answer first. Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, I would have to say probably my Mary Poppins costume. No, there were a few things in high school. Like we did Alice in Wonderland for theater once. That was pretty complicated. Uh, like like the, the caterpillar. He was fun. Um, but for myself, I would say that Mary Poppins costume, mostly because I didn't go off of a pattern. And I... I made it out of a wedding dress I found at the thrift store. So that was, figuring that out was interesting and fun. Um, but yes. So for me, it's two Aditta quilts. One is, I think it's Garden Path or Garden Patch. It was a book we published for her and I made all the blocks. And then I, this is so bad, I sold it on eBay so that someone else could finish it because it was just too intense. I couldn't finish it. Wow. And then her other book, oh, and then another quilt. It wasn't an Aditya quilt. It's a quilt that we designed. It's the one that I can never think of the name of. It's Creams. And Sarah designed it. Oh, oh, Cream and Sugar. Cream and Sugar. Right? That was difficult because there's so many points. So That's those would right. be the two. But the first one, I just gave up. I just said, well, I'm not going to throw it away. Because, I mean, I'm not going to throw it away. But I figured, you know, I'll just sell it on eBay. And, you know, somebody else will finish it. And it'll be lovely. Mm. But it was just so much. I just I just gave up. Wow. But I don't want it to just sit in my sewing room depressed and not finish. So I just. Oh. And it's kind of like the Harry Potter quilt. It's like, I need to finish it. I need to finish it. Yeah. I, somebody commented and said you need to just pay someone to finish it and that's a great idea so gina if you want to finish it i'll send oh. it all to you but not, yeah i just need to finish it that was not hard though right it's no that like, one's super easy yeah. it's i'm not motivated by it because two things one is it's all little squares which is fine but it's solids and they don't excite me like a floral like this floral excites me it makes me want to cut it up and it's also Harry Potter and I don't read books and I don't read fiction and I don't understand it. And I might've watched, I don't think I've even watched the movies. I think Kevin watched the movies with them. Hmm. I don't get it. Like if you talk in science fiction, dramas, any, I don't get it. Like I can't get into it. I never have, um, like Shrek, I don't get it. Like if I went to that movie, <laughs> if I went to watch Shrek, I would go to sleep. <laughs> I literally would just be like, oh, it's time for a nap. I just can't get myself into that. That's just not my thing. So I don't understand it. So it doesn't motivate me to make it because it's like a flying dragon and I don't know what it is. And I don't know, like, I don't, I don't get it at all. It's fair. Like we went to that Harry, like years ago, Harry Potter something land in some Universal City or yes. Disney or Universal something. Universal Studios, yeah. I was like, <sighs> my kids were <laughs> all into it and I was just clueless they would ask questions and i would have no idea i had was completely clueless <laughs> but i mean you know i go i go i just don't have a clue mm -hmm. kevin does kevin is very good he he has a clue and i'm just like oh no Aww. 
All right. And then for we wrap up, just Gina said, uh, she's in the chat, and she said her hardest was Summer Moon. Oh, that's true. One. That one was hard. Okay, that was, yeah, that would beat the cream of sugar. That quilt was hard. That quilt, I think the hardest part of that quilt was so many different sizes of half square triangles, and every block was so different. It, there wasn't really a way to, like, cut and be efficient. You just, like, had to start, stop, start, stop, start, start. But, yeah, that was, ooh, yeah, that, yeah. So, guys, I hope you have a great week, and I will see you next week. Bye, everyone.